Hey guys, in the last video on this 1970s gas-powered scuba compressor, we decided that the uh, the old flathead Briggs wasn't really worth trying to uh, trying to salvage. Let's take a look at what I picked up to replace the old flathead Briggs. We don't really need an unboxing video. Here's what came in the box. We got the motor, we got a mounting plate, we got a bag with some mounting bolts and a spark plug wrench and the instruction manual. Next question is, how does this 79cc compare to the other engines that we've already looked at? We've got the Predator 224. I did a brief comparison in a YouTube short with the Predator 212. And then we've got the Duramax 440. Looking at this, we can see we've got some reinforcing ribbing on the, uh, on the top of the case. But, uh, not around the back side. We've got one oil plug here. The other side is blanked off. It's not machined. Looks to me like there might be a balance shaft installed here, uh, simply because the camshaft would have to be underneath the cylinder, probably in this area here. There's kind of a boss right here that is uh, probably the end of the camshaft. A tag that warns us this engine is not shipped with uh, any oil in it. Again, this is gonna be a splash lubricant uh, engine, similar to the 224. 212 and 440 that we've already looked at and uh, so therefore having the, the right amount of oil in the engine is going to be kind of critical. It says uh, some oil on the dipstick but uh, there aren't, isn't any in the crankcase. I happen to have some nice Rotella T4 that will dump into this thing. Uh, has added zinc for flat tappet cams which this uh, this engine would have. There is no charge wiring coming out of this engine, so it won't have a, a charge coil. But that's okay because um, there's not really anything that needs to be charged on this. Similar size recoil to what we find on the, uh, the 212 class uh, engines. Under the cover here we have a foam style air filter. Not, uh, not very much foam there. Air box that goes into kind of the standard carb on this. Looks like we've got one of the, uh, the less expensive carbs here. It does have a drain on it, so you can drain the uh, fuel out of the float bowl when you're done with it. And we've got a flat style muffler up on the top. On the front, we've got our choke and our throttle. This is a governed engine. Uh, max speed is gonna be 3,600 RPM, which I believe is the exact same RPM as the, uh, the Briggs that we're gonna be replacing. A significant difference between this engine and uh, the other engines that we've looked at is this one has threaded bosses on the bottom of the engine that we're going to attach a uh, separate motor plate to and the motor plate will get mounted to the uh, to the base of the compressor when we go to mount this to the compressor i'll be putting some loctite on these uh, bolts so that they don't vibrate loose on us but uh, for now i'm just going to snug things up here and uh, then we'll attach it to the bench so that we can do a test. The old rule of thumb that if you don't see it happen on screen, it doesn't, didn't happen. Well, here's the uh, Rotella T4 that we're gonna put in this engine. Um, no affiliation with, uh, with Shell on this, but um, supposedly this is good stuff. So that's what we'll uh, dump in here, give it a little drink. We're close to full. Came up to about here on the dipstick. We'll dump a little bit more in. And I can see we're up to there on the dipstick. We're basically ready to fire this thing up. It's got oil in it. I'll put a couple of cups of gas in it. Uh, I don't want to get too carried away. This doesn't have a fuel shut off on it, so there's no way to um, to run the carb dry other than to, uh, to open the drain. Um, our throttle is uh, up off of idle. I haven't played with the, uh, with the max setting screw yet, so who knows how high up this is gonna rev. And choke is set to the, uh, to the run position. Now I'm gonna need screws on this thing, so we might have to shut it down. Over here on the side of the engine is the, uh, the kill switch. Let me uh, set you guys up and we'll give this thing a try. Okay, everybody. Pause the video here, right now, leave me a comment down below how many pulls this is gonna to take to run. I have not uh, tried firing this up yet, so I have no idea how we're gonna start. I have pulled it over a couple of times before I put gas in it just to make sure that uh, nothing went clunk, 
But other than that, this is the first pull we're going to give it with uh, fuel and oil. So leave me a comment. How many pulls am I going to have to pull on this to get it started? Now remember, the Predator 224 started on the absolute first pull. First time I tried starting it, it fired right up. So are we going to get the same thing out of this one? Leave me a comment. Let me know. Before we get to that answer, I'm going to ask you guys to do me a great big favor. I don't know what it is in the fall. For some reason, my, the performance of my channel drops right off. I would really appreciate it if you guys could give me a, a thumb up. Maybe subscribe to the channel. Ring that bell icon so that you get notified when I put out new content. I'm really trying to get up over that uh, monetization threshold of 1,000 viewers. I've got pretty good watch hours. You guys are watching the videos, but uh, unfortunately, you're not subscribing. So if, uh, if you could click that subscribe button, I'd greatly appreciate it. Let's see how many pulls we got to make to get this thing to start. That's one. That's not too bad, two. Something tells me we're not idling at 1800 RPM. One pulse, one revolution, that should be right. Well, I guess that is accurate. Let's fire it back up again. We'll let it warm up for a little while. Well, that thing runs pretty good. Definitely uh, the governor in it isn't all that good if it's able to rev up to 5,000 RPM, but we don't have any load on this. And uh, once we're actually running the compressor, we'll see, uh, see what that does. Making 3,000 PSI on a three-stage compressor head is probably gonna load this thing down a little bit and we may have to adjust our, uh, our stop screw once we've, uh, once we've got everything installed. I think this is where we're going to end it for now. That, uh, that runs pretty good. And um, we've checked it out. It's got oil in it. In the next video on, in this series, we're going to put the, uh, we'll mount this engine onto the compressor. We're going to have to get a different pulley here because this shaft is different than the, uh, the Predator shaft. And uh, we're going to have to get a belt. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching. Greatly appreciate you stopping by. And uh, we'll catch you in the next mess.